So my final thoughts on Scream 6 as a whole is that... Greetings everyone! I hope you're doing well. My name is Nightshade, this is The Night Shift, a place where we review all things spooky. Scream 6 is finally here, it debuted last week on Thursday, I saw it on Friday, and it's come out to many mixed reviews. Now I've seen online that people say that this is one of the worst movies they've ever seen. I've seen people say that this is one of the movies that put the nail in the coffin for the Scream franchise. And on the flip side, I've seen people say that this is one of their favorite sequels. I've even seen somebody say that this is their favorite in the franchise. So this movie has come out to a lot of mixed reviews. So I'm here to throw in my two cents. So I'm breaking this video down into two parts, what I liked and what I didn't like. Starting with what I liked. Now what I did enjoy were the kills. One might say that is the most important part of a slasher flick. And this movie had a lot of really good kills. And much like the rest of the Scream films, a lot of these are knife stabs, but they're really brutal knife stabs, of which I enjoyed very much. Another thing that I really like about Scream 6 is there are a lot of Scream firsts in this movie. It's the first time we've seen a ghost face with a gun. Now in a lot of the reveal scenes, the ghost face killers are always holding the victims at gunpoint, but this is the first time we see a ghost face in full ghost face attire holding a gun. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. And this is the first time we ever have more than two ghost face killers. Technically, there's five. Get the two poser ghost faces that get killed at the very beginning of the movie. And technically, we don't see one of the ghost face killers do anything. So, I mean, it's still four ghost faces if you don't count that guy. We get some ghost face on ghost face violence, which I do actually really enjoy. And at the end of the movie, when we get the killer reveal, there are three ghost faces. And speaking of ghost face, this is probably one of my favorite ghost face portrayals of all time. This ghost face meant business. There was no messing around, it was straight to the point, straight to the kills, and I really loved that. Also, this ghost face was very well put together. There wasn't a whole lot of clumsiness, there wasn't a whole lot of flailing around and everything like that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? The closest thing we got to that was when Ghostface was trying to kill Gail, and then he was stabbing like closer and closer to her legs, but I really liked that scene because it was very suspenseful. Which brings me to my next point, the suspense in this movie was actually really good. There was a lot of really good suspenseful scenes in this movie and I really enjoyed it. Especially in the alleyway scene, I really liked the way that they uh, executed that. And this might also be my favorite Ghostface mask in the franchise. Yes, I said it. Fight me. I know a lot of people aren't gonna like that, but you know, it is what it is. I enjoy what I enjoy. And this movie was shot beautifully. Specifically, the subway scene, that scene was shot so beautifully. I really do love the color palette and everything that they did with that. That was definitely one of my favorite scenes in the movie and I kinda wish they would've left a lot of that out of the trailer. And another thing that I really liked about this movie was the characters. What I think the Scream franchise does best is they always have a good choice in likable characters. And I liked all the characters in this movie, uh, there's not a single person in there where I was like, would you please die already? There was none of that, so whenever there was a ghost face attack that felt like there was real stakes to be had. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this movie is I didn't guess who the killers were right away. Now towards the end of the movie, I had a suspicion that it was the police officer that's helping them. However, I did not see the other two killers coming, which is great because it makes the movie more fun to watch the first time you ever watch it. Like with Scream 5, I had the killers figured out pretty early on, but towards the end of this movie, I was right about one killer, but not the other two, which I really enjoyed. There's a lot of fun to be had with this movie and there's a lot to like. However, with that being said, let's get to the things that I didn't like. And what I didn't like was that the reveal was kind of weak. Like it was a lot better than Scream 3's reveal, but honestly it kind of felt rushed. So, so yeah, it wasn't my favorite reveal of all time. Also, another thing that I didn't like was the acting was kind of all over the place. Like a majority of the movie's acting is really good, but there are scenes that just felt kind of awkward and the acting was a little too ham-fisted for me. Like there were times when Sam was just kind of out of place feeling because Melissa didn't act out those scenes a little bit better. But as a whole, the acting was fine. There was just a couple spots where the acting was just kind of Eh, I can tell I'm watching a movie. Now the next thing I want to talk about is both a like and a dislike. I love the fact that they brought Kirby back for this one. She was one of my favorite characters in Scream 4, but bringing her back as an FBI agent was a little... 
it didn't have to be done. And they crack a joke about her being too young to be in the FBI. However, it still feels like she's a little too young to be in the FBI. But they built her out to be this badass FBI agent and then completely squander that. So they brought Kirby back, but they didn't really utilize Kirby in the movie like they could have. And the final thing that bugged me is a lot of people survived what should have been fatal wounds. Like Mindy gets stabbed on the train and like the blade gets pulled up and up and up and up, which should have been a fatal blow. And in movie time, just a couple hours later, she's back up and running around like she didn't just get stabbed in the fucking stomach. Also, Chad survived the dopest scene in the movie. Now there's a scene where he's being stabbed by two ghost faces simultaneously and they just stabbed the living shit out of him. Somehow he survived that. I mean, I guess the only way that he survived that was because he had sequel armor on or something. Like he should have had the coolest death in the movie, but he survives it, which kind of takes away from that scene. So my final thoughts on Scream 6 as a whole is that I really liked it. Like, I really had a good time in the movie theaters watching this. It was so fun. Sure, there was a couple downsides to this movie, but no movie is perfect. There was a lot more fun and a lot more good that outweighed the bad for me. But these are just my opinions. If you didn't like the movie, I'm not going to try to convince you why I think it's a good movie. Like, I'm a diehard Halloween fan, and I truly despise the last trilogy that came out. Like, Halloween 2018 was great. I really enjoyed that movie. However, Kills and Ends did nothing but disappoint me. And there's a lot of people in the Scream and Ghostface community that feel the same way about Scream 5 and 6. They pretty much feel the same way I did about Halloween Kills and Ends. So as a Halloween and Michael Myers fan, I feel your pain and I understand that you guys might not like this movie as much as I do. However, I did enjoy this movie. I'm going to go ahead and give this a 7 out of 10 for me. And whenever it comes out on Blu-ray, I'm going to re-watch the entire franchise and we are going to re-rank the Scream franchise with Scream 6 included. And after the absolute atrocity that is Halloween Kills and Ends, uh, Ghostface is definitely becoming one of my favorite slashers of all time. So that's just gonna about do it for me. If you liked the video, let me know by leaving me a like. Comment down below what you wanna see on the channel next. I will do my best to accommodate. And until next time, my name is Nightshade. This has been the Night Shift, and I will see you in the next video. Stay spooky, my friends. 